This is a Zima Blade. It's a pocket-sized computer powered by a four-core Intel Celeron processor with 32 gigabytes of internal memory. Who knows, this could be your next server. Today I'll help walk you through setting it up for the first time. Let's get started. All right, let's get started with unboxing our Zima Blade. That's nice. An instruction manual. And the Zima blade itself. Further into the box here, got a couple of different things. We've got a power cable. A SATA connector. couple of stickers for your blade. All right, let's get back to our Zima blade here. So this thing's pretty cool. So you can see it's pretty much pocket sized. Cover the whole thing with my entire hand here. Uh, notably, they do not come with any RAM. So when you purchase, you'll need to also purchase some RAM. Got some eight gigabyte DDR3L picked up from Amazon for a little bit, of, I think over $10. So very, very cheap. You'll also need a power supply. Zima Blade does not come with one. Uh, so I've got this cheap one. I think I got it for like 10 bucks or so on Amazon. I think it was a lightning deal or something, but it's a 45 watt USB-C uh, PD3. And it must be able to do 12 volts um, at five amps. All right, so let's dig down into this and uh, I'll show you how to install your RAM and then walk you through first time setup for this little device here. So first things first, we've got a plastic cover all the way around this. We just need to kind of unsnap it. Nice and gentle, I don't want to break anything here. Excellent. Then you can see we've got one, two screws and those two Phillips screws need to come out. Sure we don't lose these. And then this cover is just gonna kind of pop right off. All right. The really, really special part about this little computer is not only does it have uh, two SATA ports and a SATA power, you've got gigabit ethernet, uh, we've got Thunderbolt 2, a port here that's used for uh, display. So a Thunderbolt 2 to HDMI converter would work out perfect. We've got a USB 3 slot and obviously USB-C. Uh, the cool part here is that this device also supports video out through USB-C so you can use uh, hub to break out the video there. And then the really cool part about this device is this is a PCI Express 2.0 uh, by four slot. So this will take any essentially any full size or by four card. Um, so anything from storage expansion, SATA expansion cards, uh, some video cards will work with this port as well. So super cool to be able to tinker with this device, but let's get moving and we'll put in our RAM and then we'll do a first boot. So this is just a time tech eight gigabyte stick, super cheap, super easy. Slot it right in, and then we're just gonna push it down nice and gentle. We've got the RAM clicked into place. Find our cover again, slide it over. Make sure it's lined up. And then we'll put our two Phillips screws back in here. Perfect. We're all put back together. And let's boot this up. All right, let's track this Zima blade down. So I went ahead and went to findzima.com and I've downloaded this connect and install client because I can't get it to find the device uh, without installing the software. So let's go ahead and install this software 
and track down our little Zima blade here. All right, let's see how easy this is. Awesome. Well, this is my first time using it and not going as smooth as planned. Well, let's double check a couple of things and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so I was able to track down the IP address by using a, uh, a Thunderbolt to HDMI converter and logging into the device uh, from the terminal and it's 192.168.0.123 on my network here your IP address will differ so let's get logged in for the first time and it's gonna ask us to create an account I'd go ahead and log in uh, or create an account with my name a super secret password and if you ever need to log into the terminal of this the default password and username is Casa OS. All right, now we're on the Casa OS homepage, and that's legitimately all there is to set up this device. Uh, what we'll do next here is we're going to first update the device, uh, so you can see that we're running Casa OS 4.4.3, but the newest version is 4.11. So let's go ahead and start our update. Let's log back in with our username and password. All right, you can see now we're updated to the latest version, 4.11. Legitimately as easy as that. I think the hardest part uh, that we had here was tracking down just the IP address of this device. And we can get started. We could go to the App Store and load any of these applications that uh, are available for us. The cool part is these are all little Docker containers. You can add in a custom install uh, for a Docker container here. You can get crazy uh, and import it from Docker Compose, Docker CLI. Really, really easy way to get things up and running here. But what I want to do next is uh, add a little bit of storage to this device. I want to plug in one of our SSDs so that we can expand this storage because right now uh, we've only got uh, 26 gigabytes of usable space here. And once we get a couple of containers up and running, that's not going to work out well. And that's not perfect for a uh, network attached storage device. So let's cut over to that and I'll show you how to add an SSD to your Zima blade. All right, we're back to our Zima blade and it's all rebooted. Let's log into our device. We're gonna go over here to storage, click on that, click on drive. Now you can see we've got this uh, additional drive here available for us. So let's go ahead and create storage. Format and create. And now uh, we can either choose to merge our storages so they work together or use them independently. Within the Files app, you can also see that we've got a storage one and that's our formatted hard drive that we added in. I'm gonna go ahead and merge these storages. That's all it takes. Now in Files, you'll see under Location, it's now gone because our storages have combined. So we can start taking advantage of our new Zima blade here. And what we can do first is we can uh, map it as a network drive. So in the Mac Finder, we can go to Go, uh, Connect to Server. We know our device's IP address. 
is one, two, three. We'll connect to it. We're gonna connect. We're gonna connect as a guest. Oh, but there's a problem, huh? Ah, oh, I bet you I know why. Probably because we haven't shared any folders yet. The really cool, easy way to share them is to just uh, start from the files app here. And I like to share this whole root data folder. So you can select it, simply click share. And you can see here's our paths. And now let's try that again here to map this drive again. All right, so now we're connected. This downloads folder here is this downloads folder over here. And uh, let's drop a file in and see if it works here. Make sure we can write to it. All right, looks like we're writing. Going over Wi-Fi. Let's see if it's landed in our downloads folder. All right, there it is. Good deal. Okay, here on Windows, we can map a network drive so that we can copy files over to our Zima blade. Go up here and go to map network drive. I like Z, Z for Zima blade. Oh, let's enter in our IP address. And click browse, make sure we can pull it up. And we wanna mount our data folder. Uh, we can mount any of these folders. All right, cool, cool. Here is the contents of our Zima blade. You can see here's the file that we copied over from our Mac. And uh, let's copy over some more files just to make sure we can read and write here. Awesome. Works great. This thing's officially up and running as a network storage device. So this would be accessible from your computers uh, on your home network as well. And your next steps here to get started or to continue with your Zima Blade uh, would be to take advantage of this really amazing app store that's available here. Anything from uh, relational databases, uh, Minecraft servers with MineOS or Crafty Controller. Um, Plex is another great one here. Um, so many different options available here to install on your new Zima Blade. So congrats on your Zima Blade. Hope you're going to have a lot of fun with it. And I look forward to making several more videos here with uh, what we can do with a Zima Blade.